Hi, my name is Chris. This is the Camille Corp. And today, we're undertaking a project that I've never done before. What is it, you might ask? Well, we are building a full set of Mandalorian armor. Stay right here, because we're going to get into the details right after this. Hi, welcome back. So, you might ask yourself, if I've never done this before, why should you watch me do it? And I have a couple answers for you. The first being, I think it's always better to learn if somebody showcases missteps um, as they go. If you only see the happy path, you don't know what some people did wrong, how they had to troubleshoot, things like that. So I'm planning on showing you all of that, and we'll get to the big one here in just a second. But the second reason is, you know, I've done a lot of things that are not Mandalorian armor. For example, this. This was made by me. Completely out of foam and PVC pipe. Um, I also have made a lot of smaller props, including Han Solo's DL-44 pistol. So I have been building things for the better part of eight or nine years now. So I think those two things would give you reason to give this a chance. Let's jump right into it. So I will be referencing some of the pieces that I'm going to be showing you. And there will be descriptions, links in descriptions, for those of you that want to check out and maybe start working on your own suits of armor. But first, why don't we talk about how we're doing this. This is all being done, not all, this is predominantly being done by a 3D printer. Uh, I'm 3D printing these parts. I'm using two of them. I'm using an Ender 3 Pro and I'm using an Ender CR-10S. The 3 Pro has a much smaller print area. Uh, so you could print something like this gauntlet. Uh, whereas the 10S, the CR-10S, allows you to print something like this in one shot. You don't have to split apart the model, you don't have to cut it up, none of that. Um, I mentioned that I was going to show you missteps, and this helmet is the first misstep. While it looks very cool, it is too big too big for me. So, what did I do? <clears throat> Why don't we talk about that? So what I did was the very first thing that you do when you're trying to figure out something like this is how to get it the correct size, right? Because you don't want to burn a roll of filament only to realize, like I just did, that it doesn't work for what you need. Um, so you can do a couple of things you can try to hand measure it, or you can take a cross section of the actual helmet. So this is the part that fits right around here. It's also the smallest part of the helmet. If we look at this helmet, it dips in here and here. So this is the part, these small parts are the parts that have to clear your head. Obviously this does, but it's a little large. So what I did was I printed out one of these. And I was like, oh, cool, okay. Printed it at 110%. It fits over my head very nicely. I think I'm set. So I immediately jump into a three and a half day print that takes nearly an entire spool of filament. So now I'm out three days and about $25. But what did I learn? <clears throat> I learned a lot. So I'd learned that on your next go, you actually need to print these off in several sizes. So 
I have a different helmet model that I'm going to be using. Again, the link's in the description. And I printed one off at 100%, one at 105, and one at 110. Tried all three of these on. 105 was just about right. 110, maybe a little bit big. So I just kicked off the second print with, uh, again, this new model uh, with a fresh spool of filament. I managed to cut the print time down from three and a half days to just over two days. Uh, and I managed to cut my filament usage down to just over half a spool. And I was able to do this a couple of different ways. Uh, one was I was able to increase the speed that the printer head moves. And second, the model that I have on the printer now is not as thick. If you look here, you can see these are all very thick. These are thick walls which is great because it means it's sturdy and it's stable. However, with thin walls, you're using less material and it, does, and it doesn't take as long. So that is what I'm doing and I will cut to what that looks like here in just a minute. So this is the Ender CR-10S. Uh, you can see how we've started to lay down like the base layers that this helmet is gonna be built on. And as each layer gets added, uh, if you've not 3D printed before, that arm that runs across parallel to the printer plate that has the moving printer head on it will raise. So it's, it's really just like building layer upon layer upon layer until you get all the way to the top. So that is, that is what we're doing here. And... Um, after watching the first one go through, I, I have a high degree of confidence that this one is going to move as it's intended without any problems. Um, there is, I think, a natural tendency, a natural urge to start with the helmet first, right? It is the most iconic piece. Um, I actually didn't do that. I started with this, which is the you know, one of the bracers or the gauntlets. Here's what you're going to notice, though. Um, in order for me to get it over my hand, I had to size it a little large. And there are a couple different ways that we're going to address this. Two, one of them is to get a new set of gauntlets that uh, splits. The second is to print a smaller one and then cut across these seams so that you can set it on and strap it in place. So things we're gonna get there too. The piece that I think I've had the most luck with, however, <clears throat> is the chest. So this is already sanded and it's got primer on it. Uh, if you turn it around, you can see what the consistency was like before we got this done. Um, this fits just about perfectly. Uh, it is ready for paint as soon as I figure out what color I want to paint. But the cool thing is there are so many different ways you can tackle this. I almost think it's smarter if you hit something like the chest or even shoulder piece. You know, Do that first. Then you can come back later once you've got an idea of how to start to scale some of these smaller pieces and then you can try to work on the helmet. Uh, you've got a little bit more confidence under your belt. You start to learn a little bit more about your printer and your settings in your slicer program and things like that. So that is my thought um, as I go through. And that's what I think I want to relay is you're not going to do this the first time and have it right. And if you are enthusiastically sharing your progress on social media, there are going to be trolls that come in and try and knock down what you're trying to do. And my advice to you is don't let them get to you. Don't Just don't engage. Um, I posted a picture of, the, of me in the helmet saying I was working hard to get everything scaled correctly, and I had a couple of replies. And you know, One was a gif of a uh, big helmet from Spaceballs, right? And one was just like, you know, they were condescending and they were kind of douchey. But don't let it get to you keep moving, keep working. This is something 
that takes time and it takes practice and it is going to take some investment even if you have a 3d printer you have to find the armor files that you want you have to buy the filament you got to buy the sandpaper the paint the undersuit that's another one that we're going to talk about in a future video uh, i don't think i mentioned this yet but this will be a series so i do hope that you will consider hitting that subscribe button hitting the bell notification so that when i do post new content you get notified uh, and also give it a thumbs up that would be super helpful if you have any questions any comments feedback advice anything like that i would invite you to use the comment section because i would love to hear anything that you have to say i want to thank you for taking the time to watch this i want to thank you for tuning in and uh, showing some interest in the project like i said i've never done anything this big before so i'm really excited uh, and i'm definitely exercising my patience patience muscles. So thank you again. We will see you next time. And hey, keep building.